Hey guys, check out my new brand line of skateboard designs that will be hitting up the stores next month. And I can't wait to, um, wait a second, this is not real. Could this be a 3D model painted in Procreate and visualized in AR? Well, you bet it is. And this will be the video where we dive deeper into this new amazing feature coming up in Procreate 5.2. I'm going to give you my top three tips in this special mode, some of the things to watch out for, and some of the things to strive for when painting in 3D. My name is Leo, and welcome to my preview of 3D painting in Procreate 5.2. So now, let's get to it. So the team behind Procreate never ceases to impress us with each major update to this amazing painting application for the iPad. It's becoming more and more clear that each year the team picks up a theme or a section of the app to expand upon. And this year's theme was all about 3D painting and more memory access to Procreate. Alongside, of course, some other nice features for 2D illustration as well. The truth is, is that 3D painting will unlock the doors for many, many artists to be able to create product mockups with their current designs straight from Procreate just like the one I was just using as an example with a skateboard. But also for all the other artists who never had a chance to really play around in 3D, this may just be that initial push that will trigger new learning avenues, new possibilities, and spark their curiosity into the world of 3D. There are of course some caveats though, so let's start with tip number one in this process, which is to make sure that your model is properly set up for 3D painting before you even start. So Procreate allows us to import USDZ files as well as OBJ files, which are both very friendly, interchangeable 3D model extension files. But it's not like any model will work from the get-go into Procreate. In fact, if your model does not have any UVs at all, or in other words, the process of being able to receive a 2D texture projected onto the 3D model, the model won't be even imported into Procreate at least doing my tests over here. Now, if your 3D model has some UVs, but if they are incorrectly set up in their mapping properties, you may get some undesired results in Procreate, such as broken and non paintable areas in your mesh. So even though you'll be able to import the model into Procreate, there is no way to fix this texture surface issue while painting within the app. The model needs to be production ready from the moment is exported as a USDZ or OBJ file. So if you don't have a lot of experience here when it comes to UV mapping in 3D, you have basically two routes you can go when working on a 3D project in Procreate. You may want to work with a 3D artist who can help you prepare and deliver the 3D asset you need, making sure the model has proper UV maps and making sure the model has a good look on the poly count as well. The other option is that you may want to go with a 3D asset website such as TurboSquid and buy a production-ready 3D model just over there. If you choose this second option, please make sure to read the description of each item that you're interested in and always look for models which have already UV mapping applied to it and that they also offer the extension OBJ in their provided files. Any other option other than OBJ or USDZ will lead you to having to open that file in their native 3D package software, fixing any necessary UV maps, and then re-exporting that file as an OBJ file. So tip number one really is for you to make sure that you get models which are ready to be brought in into Procreate. Okay, so now that we have our model in and it looks like it's a proper model with proper UV mapping to it, it's time to start painting your 3D model. So tip number two is going to be about the best approach to how to paint 3D model textures in Procreate. There are actually two ways to paint 3D models in this new 3D mode. You can paint directly on the model by tapping twice on each element that you like to paint, or you can head up into the actions menu and then on the new subsection 3D, we can turn on show 2D texture and then paint our model as well in this way. In this mode, what we see is a 2D flat plane of our texture in an unwrapped state, meaning this is the 2D flat plane with all the colors and material information that gets wrapped up onto the 3D model, just like when we apply a sticker skin to our iPad or Apple Pencil. The 3D mode is really easy to paint, but it's really hard when it comes to duplicating layers 
and having to try to mirror textures on the fly. It just doesn't seem to work so well, as we don't currently have a transformed gizmo to understand which direction are we moving this texture in Procreate. The 2D texture mode is great to copy and paste things, but really, it's really hard to understand what and where to paint here. So tip number two really is going to be actually combining the best of both worlds. For example, say we do want to copy those super cool graphics that we have here on this helmet, which are set into different layers, to the other side of the helmet. We can start by tapping on the Actions menu, on the 3D subsection, and then let's turn on the Show 2D Texture feature. Now let's go back into the Actions menu, but this time let's go into Canvas and turn on Reference. Now, instead of just having another 2D copy of our canvas here on the little window, let's tap on the reference window and choose 3D. Now, dragging this window to the side, we can now work in this powerful 2D mode as we duplicate and move layers with the snapping option turned on, and our 3D preview lets us confirm that we have properly duplicated and mirrored the layers in the right position. This mode lets us combine the power of the 2D texture editing with the easy viewing and preview of the 3D mode. And that is, my friends, tip number two here in a nutshell. The last tip here in this video is going to be about what we call look development, or look dev for short. In 3D, any lights and environment HDRs that you set can really make a difference, and in fact, change the temperature, mood, and even the look of your renders even if you keep the colors and materials of your asset the same. Just looking at this example here on screen, watch how the scene completely changes between these two environment settings. So in fact, my recommendation is for you to start painting your 3D model, but try not to get too far before you start tweaking the lights and environment of your scene. For example, once again, if you do have to make this helmet look like it's uh, looking under a nighttime setting, Know that once you tweak the lights and environment, the colors on the helmet will also probably look darker than in the current daytime that you've been working for a few hours. So keeping things in separate layers almost becomes a must as they will allow you to go back into those layers after you set up the lights and environment and tweak each layer's hues in order to work with the new lighting setup. Perhaps you would like to have copies of these same layers, one for daytime renders, and another one for nighttime environment renders. This is all up to you if you consider building your assets in this non-destructive workflow format. Now, when it comes to exporting your work, Procreate allows us to export the 2D flat texture so that you can apply that into another model in, a, in another 3D software package. You can also export the render as a PNG file with uh, your painting texture included applied to the asset or you can also export the model itself as a USDZ or OBJ file. And you can also do a turntable animation of your 3D model. Now, if you are working as a texturing artist for some freelance work, for example, I would actually highly recommend you exporting all four of these avenues so that you can deliver your flat 2D texture file, your 3D model asset ready textured, and the render image and the turntable will be also sent as reference materials so that others can know what the asset should look like when imported by another software package. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this quick review and my short selection of tips for 3D painting in Procreate 5.2. Now, if you wanna learn a little bit more about Procreate, there's always more content for you guys to watch. One is my latest upload here on the right side of the screen, and the other one is a video that YouTube is recommending you to check it out. Thank you so much for watching, as always, and I'll see you on the next one.